it just makes me want to run even more. Um, it's not not the sort of thing that would that would put me or or anybody off. All the training you do to get to this level, even even as a fun runner, it's it's something that you just need to show people. Um, we don't give in. Mm-hmm. And you, what are you running the London Marathon for, Ed? Um, well, I'm running on behalf of Acorns Children's Hospice, mm-hmm. um, which I'm sure you know, but it's a, a Midlands Children's Hospice so celebrating 25 years this year. Um, and it costs them about £750 a day per child. And their aim is to support 2,000 of the um, life-limited children in the, in the Midlands. Uh, and they can't do that at the moment. And it costs £8 million a year. And most of that has to come from events like this, people like... Uh, me going around cajoling our friends to get money to afford it. Um, but I, I chose to do that because um, I, I had a daughter in 1989 who sadly didn't live, and there were no children's hospices at the time. Um, and now there are. They're a fantastic thing. And I think it's very important that um, we raise as much money as we can for them. Um, I've used a lot of my um, family, friends, influence, and, and also... Um, uh, a little-known fact is that uh, in the last, well, since 1984, uh, the Freemasons Grand Charity has given £10 million to the UK hospice movement. Right. And this year they gave £600,000 to nearly 240 hospices. Wow. Um, and I'm, I'm a local Freemason and very proud of it. And the, the Worcestershire Freemasons has chosen Acorns as one of its five key charities for this year and, and for several years. Um, do, do Acorns just run from charitable donations then? Is that... There's a small government funding, as far as I'm aware, but um, it, to be eligible for these grants, they have to be at least 60 to 80 percent self non non government funded. So um, public subscription charities. I mean, a, at the Acorns event team, um, I think run by Laura is is phenomenal. They run all sorts of events, walking around the centre of Birmingham late at night mm-hmm. um, in the dark. Yes, I've, um, I've been on one of those before. Yes, yes. I marshaled that last year. It was, it was quite quite surreal sitting in the dark in the middle of it is but it's it's an amazing feeling when you're actually going around and you're walking it and um you know in the dark at night and also you get to discover parts of birmingham that well either a you've never been to before or b if you have it's generally always been in the daylight but there is such an atmosphere an amazing atmosphere everybody just walking together coming together chatting together exactly people that you've never met before but you know you you kind of bond on that one night don't you certainly do and and marathon an even bigger example of that thousands of people just being happy at raising money and working hard you know, how to, much training do you have to do to uh, to, to do this ed um well i'm i'm not young so I, I have to do quite a bit and i started running again last july um and uh, i've done about 900 miles running since then and i, I started a 16-week training program at christmas um and i've done about 650, 700 miles since then. Wow. Um, culminating in some rather unpleasant ones. Um, quite quite long. Yeah. All oh. in the cold and the snow this year, though. Oh, wow. Well, listen, I do hope that it goes well for you uh, on Sunday. How did you feel about what happened in, in Boston? What, what did you think? What, I mean, did, did it scare you, make you think about whether you'll be safe on Sunday? No, not at all. It just made me angry. Um, it made me think that um, I mean, what, what I actually thought was that while there are people um, over there uh, and anywhere when, when these tragedies happen that are still running towards the danger to help people, mm. these, guys, these people will never win. Yeah, they will it. never win. Yeah. Um, the human spirit will always beat them. There's, there's a few, um, whatever cause they're supporting, they're wrong, that this is not the way to get your message across and it's certainly not the way to win. Um, and I hope on Sunday... There will be even more people there celebrating what's going to be hopefully not too hot today. But, uh, it is true. Day. As I was talking to Marie early, she's going to be uh, running in the marathon on Sunday as well. And she said that, you know, uh, what we have to remember is that it's a, a, a very small minority that do this. But when you see what happened last night and the people running on from the finish line, just running to the le- nearest hospital to give blood. Yep. I mean, that's what the spirit is all about. People sort of like uh, like coming together. And, I, you know, I admire anybody that's doing it. And I, I just think it's it, it's absolutely it, it, the scenes coming out of there last night were just hideous to watch, weren't they? Indeed. I was talking about I was giving blood this morning. I was talking about that this morning and it's just. It's just terrible, um, but I, I, you know it shouldn't. It shouldn't stop the event, and it certainly shouldn't stop us um, having a fantastic day and celebrating all the millions of pounds that are raised for all sorts of charities. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and I mean, it's my first London Marathon, and well, it's my last ever marathon. I'm not running again, but um, it's it's just the sort of day that we should celebrate and not be afraid of. Well, that is the spirit, Ed, and I hope that it all goes well for you and you raise loads of money. Thank you very much for joining me this afternoon on BBC WM, Ed. Thank you, Caroline. Thank you. Uh, and let's have a chat to Marie, who's on now. Hi, Marie. Hello, how are you? I'm um, not too bad, not too bad. How are you?